Hi guys, Neil at Italia Autos here. Welcome back to another video in the workshop. I have got the uh, 145 project behind me that I'm going to be doing some work on today. I'm um, not going to be getting the engine out in this episode because I'm going to need my ramp still, so uh, we can't take it all apart yet. So what I'm going to be working on are the front and rear brakes and I'm going to be changing the rear shockers because they were a little bit rusty. So uh, join me in this video for some uh, brake work. So we've got some Magnesi Morelli pads and rear discs and Delphi front discs and brand new shockers. I am still struggling to get brakes, that's why I've not got a matching set of Magnesi Morelli at the front. Um, a lot of places tend to be out of stock when you want a matching set. So let's get cracking by stripping the tyres off, the brakes down and taking the shockers off. Off camera I have just finished changing this side, didn't particularly run into many problems other than a stripped bolt. But what I have done is put the parts next to each other, the new and old. As you can see, those brake pads were not wearing evenly. They were all corroded, pitted, uh, along with the discs. Uh, that's what they should look like. And although the shocker is still working okay, you can still push the pressure down on it. And it comes back up quite nicely. It is about to develop a hole how badly rusted that is so uh, it's a very good job we've changed that otherwise that shocker would have been leaking quite shortly right let's get this caliper off first Now I've started this job, I have left the handbrake off and I've also taken the top off the brake fluid reservoir. Just so it makes things a lot easier to get the caliper off. And when I bleed the brakes afterwards, I haven't got to worry about getting the car down from uh, being on high in the air. Disc off with the 12 mil pins that hold it in. Would have been a good idea for me to have taken these off while the brake caliper was still on. We got that in the end anyway. Little taps from the front should freeze off. Pull it out. Now we need to get the shocker off. There's a little sort of plastic case in there. We need to take that casing off so we can then get the 15mm socket in the hole onto the nut and hopefully it comes off in one piece because if it snaps we are in trouble. And then the only other one we need to take off is at the bottom there, which is a 19 mil. That just enables us to get the uh, spanner in there a little bit easier. And when I did the other side, the nut had rusted quite a lot, so you couldn't get it on very easily. Spin it a few times while it's not on, it might remove some of the rust. And then I've lost my hammer. And there's my hammer.
Let's just pop a 16 on there, just to uh, help get rid of some of the rust. See, that's gone on there. I'm not going to put any force on it, I'm just going to twist it left and right to clean some rust off the thread, off the thread off the top of the nut. And be careful not to lose the socket in there. <laughs> Still doesn't want to know. Right, I'm just going to move you out of the way while I get this on and uh, start undoing the thread. Right, I've got it on now. Just with the camera being out of the way, I could just get it on a lot straighter and a little tap of the hammer and it went on. So let's see if it will come undone without uh, putting up a fight. Now what I've got to be very careful of as well is not to lose this bolt within the chassis rail because this is the chassis rail here and the subframes the other side of it. What you suppose you could do is put some cloth below it so if it does drop it's not going to really go anywhere but I'm going to be super careful instead and watch me drop it anyway. Okay, so that's loose now. Let's get my Sealy ratchet on the end of it. Okay, the nuts decided to stay in there. far out. Right, what I'm doing, I am just going to raise this up a little bit so the, uh, the bolt straightens up and comes out a little bit easier. And there we go. As you can see, you've got a vast cavern in there and if you drop that in there, you're never going to get that out. Clean that thread up a little bit so it doesn't want to come out. Now a little bit of release oil on that. Let's see if it wants to play now. Alpha in their wisdom have put a square end on the bolt so you can't grip it properly. Let's do it up again. This shock absorber isn't working at all, so I've got to pull it up with my hands, push it all the way down, and nothing, it stays there. So the damping in that shocker has uh, totally gone. So that's for the scrap heap.
a little bit more lubrication to help it go back on. Now what I've done here, I've used the transmission jack to raise the rear arm. So the bolt hole through there, if you can see it, should line up. I don't think I can do both at the same time. There you go, look just about, you can see that we're almost in line. So now I can just push the bolt to the hole and um, hopefully get it in in one shot without dropping it. Most nerve-wracking bit over with now, we can do the, put the discs back on, push the caliper back and uh, bleed the brakes. The cover's gone back in. Now we need to use my brake piston pushing tool. What I'm going to do as well is open the bleed nipple because it makes it a lot easier to push the caliper back. And as I'm bleeding and cleaning the brakes up anyway, it doesn't matter if we lose a little bit of fluid. These are quite hard to get turning. I did check the brake fluid on the other side and uh, it was definitely rather discoloured and old. So I might as well get the fluid changed at the same time while the wheel's off because then the rear end is pretty much uh, finished when it comes to putting new parts on anyway. Bleed limple up for now.
Now, I don't know whether you can see that on camera, but I've just been bleeding the brakes, and if you've seen the fluid going through, did you manage to spot the, uh, the fluid change colour? So we know that the uh, new fluid is there. So that's the brake all bleeding now, so we just need to close it all back up again, put the wheel on, and then we can move on to the front brakes. One four five wheel nuts are a pain because there's no lip on the end of the nut, so it goes all the way in, and you can't get it back in to the wheel very easily. You've got to push it in first, and then turn it by hand, and hopefully it catches. First time I can have a proper look inside this arch as well. Luckily, it's still solid. So it just needs a little bit of uh, wire wheeling, maybe a few little spots of welding to uh, get rid of any holes. But I will take the arch liner out when the engine comes out so we can uh, check there's no rust holes behind here and behind here, like there most often is on 145s. Got a very long thread unusually. That's stuck nice and fast. I'm just doing now on the back of the caliper holder I'm just undoing one of the bolts and loosening another one off so I can then get the disc out and get the new one in now we should be able to get the disc out now before we bother putting anything back together let's push this piston back in Could, but it's a little bit seized. OK. 
Okay, right, we may have a faulty caliper here. So what I'm going to do is remove the caliper off the car and see if I can get it to free up in my voice. Now let's see if it will play the game. Yep, we've freed that up now. We're making a mess everywhere, but at least we've freed it up. Alright, let's get this back on now. Never bothered pinching the brake line off because uh, we've got to drain the fluid out anyway. There we go, that wasn't too difficult. wear sensor on this side only I think on this car because it's only supplied me with one So plugged in. Ah, we have a problem. We have been supplied with the wrong size discs. And I've only just noticed. <laughs> Let's go and grab one of the old discs. Yep, that's how big they should be. Oh. Blooming parts companies wasting your time. Right, let's get this all stripped back down again and then jump cut to the uh, correct disc being fitted. Right, we're now 24 hours later and we have some new discs arrived. So let's open them and make sure they are the correct ones. When they appear to be correct. Right, let's try and get one fitted now.
That looks a little bit better, doesn't it? It actually fits the carrier now. And now, in my tantrum yesterday, I thought I'd lost a brake pad, but I haven't. There we go, that fits much nicer now. Can't believe I missed it yesterday when I was putting the disc on. I think that pin there sticking out of it to the pad isn't going right against the uh, hub. So it's getting stuck when you go around, but once you put the wheel nuts on, I'd imagine that will be fine. Clean the back of that disc properly. Covers back on. What I'll do on this one is zoom in a little bit and see if you can tell the colour change. That looks a bit clearer. And there we go, all done. Um, I do have to finish off the other side, but I will do that off camera, so that'll only take another 10 minutes. So we will call that the end of the video now. And if you like what you see, please give me a call or send me an email if you want to quote for any work doing. And also, if you've got this far through the video, please give it a like and also consider subscribing. Thanks a lot for watching, and I shall see you in the next episode.